Today, I was asked to do a video ranking the seven princes in terms of power. Now, most of the princes have not appeared in the show yet, but there is a lot we can infer from the various background elements in the show, as well as the real life lore that inspires it. My name is DeepCut, hit that subscribe button, let's jump into it, but real quick, I have a cold, so sorry if I sound funny today. Now, to most people, the actual power ranking of the Seven Princes of Hell is believed to match their place in the actual hierarchy of the Seven Rings of Hell. We will break down some of the reasons that may be accurate, however, one thing we try to account for here is not the actual physical power levels each demon has, but how they may be able to exploit their resources against one another. There are seven rings of hell, each being named after one of the seven deadly sins, and each ruled over by a demonic prince from a real-life myth and legend. There is an elevator connecting each ring of hell, further indicating that they are physically stacked on top of each other in some way. Lucifer rules as the king of all of hell at the very top in the pride ring, and is noted as being a fallen angel within the show. In much of real-life mythology, demons as a whole are just angels who fell from heaven, but in Hasbin Hotel and Hell of a Boss, we also have native-born demons of both great and little power. Traditionally, the other princes are considered fallen angels as well, but we are not sure if that will be the case in the Helliverse, as Satan, Beelzebub, and the others may all just be native-born demonic entities. Lucifer is said by Vivzipop and series writer Adam Nalen to be immune to the angelic weapons and instead can only be smited by an angel of greater power than him. Based on the chair Lucifer is sitting on from his redesigned artwork, it would seem he is a seraphim, his chair matching some of the descriptions of them with wings and eyes. Seraphim are generally regarded as the highest of angels, and with Lucifer being described as the most powerful being in hell, I imagine it is only other seraphim that could smite him. So if Satan and the others are angels, they would still be weaker than Lucifer, likely lower in the angelic hierarchy, and could potentially be smited by him on a whim. Directly below the Pride Ring is the Wrath Ring, which is known to be ruled by Satan, who has not appeared in the show as far as we know, though some have speculated we can see his silhouette in the Hasman Hotel pilot. Satan and Lucifer are two mythological figures who got tied together as the devil figure in modern Christian culture. When not put together as a single entity, they are often considered two of the most important figures in Hell. In some schools of thought, Lucifer is the king of Hell, and Satan is his extension on the Earth, inspiring the theory that Satan's job in the show is to specifically conquer the Earth. This is something his imps would help with, in addition to also providing the food necessary for all of Hell to eat. And without those two things, Hell would have no food, and Earth would be free from Hell's influence. Without the food, the other species of Hell would die out, and the sinners, while immortal, would be starved. The overpopulation issue of the Pride Ring would make it increasingly difficult to farm for themselves, something they don't seem to be capable of, as it all rests on the shoulders of the Wrath Imps. Between this and the likely large natural power that Satan as a mythological figure should wield, Satan is an obvious choice for who is set kin in command in hell, though of course he is outranked by Charlie and Lilith as Lucifer's family. Just below Wrath is the Gluttony Ring, ruled by Beelzebub, who thus far appears to be a female in the Helliverse. We have a few glimpses of this ring from the previews of the originally planned episode 8 of season 1, which is supposed to come out eventually in some form. We appear to see the gluttony ring again in the recent Hollywood episode of Hell of a Boss, where we get a look inside of a Hellhound adoption facility in Blitz's flashback, which is known to be run by Beelzebub, with her signature appearing on each adoption form. Please note it's been confirmed that this is not short for Belphegor, but meant to be the B-E-E -E of Beelzebub, with the second E coming out a bit long. Beelzebub, in some schools of thought, is treated as the third part of some sort of unholy trinity to counter the Catholic Holy Trinity. Even outside of this mythological boost to her power ranking, Beelzebub seems to have direct control of not just the Hellhound population, but perhaps even another prince, but more on that later. Below Beelzebub in the power ranking, many fans expect Mammon, but I believe that Mammon may not be as powerful as many fans think. Recently, in a poll on our channel, he was voted to be the most powerful of the princes of the five lower rings of hell, but I feel like this is only because we recently had a lot of Twitter information about Mammon, Vivzipop teasing the character with fun McDonald's references before giving us a silhouette of his character design. However, a lot of this seems to be belittling Mammon to a large degree, and it gives the impression that he's not as strong as we think he is. Instead, the fourth most powerful prince I believe to be Osmodius. 
Osmodius is not just a prince of hell, but also one of the kings of the Ars Goetia. Beelzebub and Baal share some etymology, so Beelzebub may be a king in the Ars Goetia as well, but it definitely gives Osmodius a power boost over the lower princes of hell, such as Mammon, Leviathan, and Belphegor, since they are definitely not included in the Ars Goetia. At his disposal is not just the succubus of the Lust Ring, but more than 70 of Hell's most powerful demons and their library of magics. Osmodius seems largely disinterested in conflict, however, and likes to live a playboy celebrity billionaire lifestyle. But he is powerful enough both in terms of his own force and the relationship he has with many others to outrank Mammon, I think. Below Osmodius would finally come Mammon, who does have a scary amount of power considering he's in charge of Hell's currency. We've talked in my previous hour-long mega compilation on the princes about the many ways that Mammon can collect Hell's souls in currency form by slowly milking the populations for more and more money with various tactics, from his moneymaker app we can see on Blitz's phone, all the way down to the criminal loan sharks who presumably work for Mammon from the Greed Ring. Mammon is even noted as having enough sway in the courts that he can get away with ripping off Lucifer's theme park from the Pride Ring called Lulu World, with his theme park in the Greed Ring called Lulu Land. Mammon is powerful because he really captures the essence of too much capitalism, how any system can be exploited by just finding the right degree of ripping someone off to do it legally. Laws put in place to protect an original idea like Lulu World end up becoming the laws that protect Mammon's right to make Lulu land. In terms of physical power, the currency of souls seems to be how demons actually level up, which could theoretically make Mammon more powerful than anyone else if he has the currency for it. However, Vivzipop's portrayal of him as a Grimace-like figure on Twitter gives the impression that he doesn't know what he is doing. He's treated like a celebrity as we see in the 2022 trailer, but Grimace is a sort of bumbling buffoon who just tries to hoard everything for himself when there is an excess for everyone, and ultimately fails. The use of Grimace feels so much like a gluttony thing that I have the feeling that he lives a lifestyle where he spends almost all of his money. The Wrath Ring is in charge of the production of Hell's food, as we talked about, but according to the apps on Blitz's phone, the fast food industry seems to be run by Beelzebub, with Bees Eats being the in-world parallel to fast food delivery. The weird way this all connects gives the impression that Mammon is great at stealing money, but he spends it all on the same kind of worthless stuff he expects everyone else to, making him just a pawn to princes like perhaps Beelzebub supplying him food, and Osmodius supplying him with robo fizzes, and nothing but an enemy to the princes he rips off, such as Lucifer and his allies. Regardless of where his true power could be, he has made himself to one of the weakest by succumbing to this greed, I imagine. Below Mammon, I expect to find Belphegor, the prince of the Sloth Ring. Now, Belphegor hasn't appeared on screen, but we know that they are in charge of the happy pills and sleeping pills that keep Hell's population going, such as Wistolus and his happy pills and the sleepy pill app that appears to be on Hell phones. For some reason, the branding of Belphegor is with candles, such as we see on the candle-headed demons that resemble Baphomet. Baphomet is the alleged deity worshipped by the Knights Templar and was quickly equated with demons. Baphomet is not one of the Seven Princes, but seems to be a large part of the industry that keeps the Sloth Ring afloat. Belphegor is famous in a real-life legend for rebelling from heaven with the other demons simply because he didn't want to work, allowing him to be lazy in hell. He seems to focus on a relaxing lifestyle that led him to needing happy pills and sleeping pills to maintain that lifestyle without having proper working structure. With that in mind, Belphegor is largely just a figurehead in my mind, with Baphomet being a demon or class of demons who run the sloth ring for Belphegor. Regardless of how much Belphegor has done for himself, however, he has slipped into controlling much of Hell's population, who are dependent on him in one way or another for either maintaining their emotions or their sleep. This would place Leviathan at the very bottom of the power ranking in my mind. Leviathan rules over the Ring of Envy, which we only know to have a focus on social media. This is something that likely didn't happen until extremely recently in Hell's history, making the Envy Ring a place that's hard to exploit in some way. Social media is believed to have been brought in by the Earthborn sinner Velvet with the help of her adoptive father Vox, who controls TV and really all of the screens of Hell. Leviathan would seem to be largely dependent on Velvet if they are social media focused, or at best just ripping off Velvet. 
Before social media, some fans have speculated that envy demons were a sort of high class of demons whose lives were popularized in newspapers and magazines, but it's hard to imagine how exactly they would wield that as an extreme power, much less how they would leverage it over others. That being said, many fans believe the Envy Ring not just to be the home of deep sea demons that appear in the background of the show, but perhaps even Lovecraftian entities as a whole, perhaps having their roots in more deeper and hidden magics that make them a step above the other demons. But until we see more of that, Leviathan is the prince that appears to be the least powerful of the bunch. But this is just my power ranking based off of my personal thoughts on the show. Let me know the order you would have them in and why, and perhaps suggest another power ranking or versus video topic for me to cover. For more information on the Seven Princes, consider checking out this recent mega video we put out. It's an hour-long roundup of everything we know about the princes so far. See you guys next time.